How did you get involved in all of this? What, in the, for in the, Dunkirk? In the war, in Dunkirk. Well, uh, I was a normal, um, you know, young man, uh, married to a nice woman, and um, only young, I was young, and uh, I came home from work one day, and we lived in a little flat uh, apartment, no big, uh, what, one or two rooms, and uh, Charlton Street in London. And um, I got home one morning and uh, uh, went down for the letter. We had letter boxes in front, in the front of the door. And the old postman used to put um, letters through the door. And consequently, amongst those letters was a little card, no bigger than that. You are to report to the Labour Exchange on Science and Science Ho. You are in the army. So you were just I picked. went to tear it up. If I tore it up, I never went. I would have been put in prison. It was conscription. And I didn't know none of us young chaps never knew nothing about conscription. We was, you know, angry what, what, what's it? We was in the army. Now this was before war was declared and it was Churchill what made us build the arms up and say right we've got to go in the army and that then I was uh, at a uniform the doctors came round in the exchange place where we was all the young boys we was all young chaps you know one of them was swearing and saying well what am I you doing here you know and um, Next minute, a doctor came round too. There was a load of doctors in there, and I went, bum, 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 cough, <coughs> cough, open your mouth, uh, but you're in the army. <laughs> Just like that. That's yeah. what happened. And the next minute, uh, you had to go and get your uniform. And it was only, <coughs> I think I was only home for two days. I got back to the wife and said, uh, I'm in the bloody army, I said. Oh, she said, no. I said, oh, I'm in the bloody army. So she said, all right. She said, well, you'll have to make do, won't you? There wasn't no war yet. But there were the, with all the balloons up and um, Waldens walking the streets, you know, the Waldens were dressed up in a uniform. We called them Waldens. Uh, we knew that war was going to come. So she said, well, you better go. And uh, so I said, all right. So next morning, I had to report uh, <coughs> to a, a certain place, uh, like the Labour Exchange, in my uniform. And when I got there, when I got there, uh, we was uh, told that we was going to be sent to our unit. So I was transported with a load of others to Oxford. And I'm saying ta -da to the people, they're waving to us outside because, you know, and, you know, waving to us. And they knew what was happening. And um, anyway, uh, I got on this train and uh, with all the boys and uh, a load of them. And uh, we didn't know, you know, we, we had, we had no rifle, nothing like that. And all of a sudden, uh, we landed in Oxford. We was transported to the barracks in Oxford. <coughs> the university was only about a, half a mile away from the barracks. Mm -hmm. <coughs> anyway, we got to the o Oxford barracks and uh, bomb issued a rifle, sergeant in front of us. Now you know what you've got to do, boys, you know? You've got to, you've got to behave yourselves and uh, be good soldiers. I said to my mate, Johnny, he's a, he's got a son. I said, what do I mean? And then, uh, you know, we didn't want to be in the army. So anyway, the sergeant got hold of us, well, stand still, stand attention, stand up. And they come round and, you know, really make us stand. Anyway, we, um, was issued a rifle, no bullets. 
and it was a, a bolt action rifle. Now the thing is this, that in the British Army, we had none of these machine guns what they got today. We had none of them. The only one what we had like a machine gun was what they called a Sten gun. Mm -hmm. And that was like a machine gun, more bullets. The rifle only held what, a few bullets. So then that's why they put the bayonet on the end. So that you could, yeah, you had something. So, and the bayonet had a groove for it so that when you put it into a person, the blood would come out down that groove. Because if you put the bayonet in without that groove, it would be suction. You'd have trouble to get it out of the body. You know what I mean? Listen, now, did you know that? Depth did you know that? Here. I did not know that. That's why it had the groove so it would all bleed out. Yeah, so John, John, before we go on, uh, you want to clear your lip a little bit? I think my head. Well, yeah, you're dribbling a little bit. Uh, just on your your upper lip a little bit. You might want to clear it. Just I don't I don't know if it's going to show he, up he on camera or not. He got it within the Oxford and Bucks. Anyway, which is he the knows bus. that. Oh, you told told him. Him. Now then, then uh, we we done this training, as I say, uh, and. Uh, we had, a, we had a sergeant who used to train us very good. And uh, uh, forget the other thing about the officer, what I told you. Uh, it was a sergeant, and we called him Mutton Jaws because he used to go, ah, 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 ah. his face used to go, ah, ah, ah. and uh, he used to, he was an easy one. He wasn't a tough sergeant, you know, but to uh, stand attention on that, that. You say, he'd take us onto the field, and that's where. We used to all sit down, all the platoon, we'd sit down, take it easy boys, take it easy. And we used to sit on the ground, take it easy. A sergeant. So I said, well, what's that? And then when he saw an officer coming up the hill, onto the grass, like a big field grass, get up, stand up, the officer's there. And up we'd, up we'd get, we'd get up. Oh, you're all right. I'm just gonna that there. We'd get up and uh, uh, just stand attention and say, "Yeah, didn't make up. We was training, you know, no, 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 no. but forget that. We got over that, and then, yeah. then we went back to barracks. And then we had more training in the barracks square and uh, done some. We used to race around the barracks square, you know, in our shorts and that, and get us a little bit fit, you know." do a bit of boxing in the ring and that, mm -hmm. you know, it was all what was there before war was declared. How'd you find out war was declared? Well, this is what happened. Uh, I told you that I, I went on night duty one night and uh, I was standing outside the square and we had to go on duty and stand there with a bayonet and gun and stand out and like that. Like I do at Buckingham Palace. We stood outside those barracks. It was all in our training, discipline. And the thing is that um, I was in the square with a load of other soldiers, so they were standing around, and all of a sudden there was like a, uh, a speaker system or something like that, and it said, uh, we are now at war with Germany. Just like that? Like that. And uh, I think everybody got depressed, you know. Uh, they didn't want to know, you know, really about going to France. I mean, it was, you had to go to don't they, about that. But the thing is that uh, I looked at my mate and he looked at somebody and said, hmm, what can he do, you know? And, 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 and. All of a sudden, the sergeant came, when we went back into our rooms, like the, like the barracks, Sergeant came in and said, well, you know, lads, he said, uh, we were at war. He said, now you've got to be good boys, you know. This is roughly what he said, roughly. You've got to be good boys and good fighters. He said, that's it, he said, and good luck to you. And uh, about a day later or two days later, we was put on a train uh, down to the dots where there was a 
boat waiting for us and uh, we was all put on that boat and I, I don't know, it, it was going very slow across the channel and the thing is that uh, I got on a bunk and my mate, he took another bunk, there was bunks like downstairs where you, and there was places where you could sleep, you know what I mean, because the boat went very slow and I sat on this, uh, I got on this bunk and I thought to myself, whatever am I doing here? I said to myself, what am I doing here, going to war? I, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm going to, you know, put the bane in somebody and then bum, bum, bum. Anyway, we arrived in uh, France. The oh, doctor was about oh, seven boats all along the docks. All the troops come out and our battalion, Oxford Arts Light Infantry, it was like a, all oh, like that on our act and uh, 48th Division and uh, we went inland and we stayed at a place uh, at, um, oh I would say at Lille. This is before it started getting tough and that was uh, right in the France and we stayed there for about what, a week, week or so? And then, behind the Maginot Line, the Maginot Line was like that. The Germans knew what they was doing. They never went near the Maginot Line. Because inside the Maginot Line, which uh, we went down, we went down and had a look at it. Uh, we looked out at the things and the, uh, the guns was facing out the Maginot. It was a line right across France. I don't know if you know about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was reading about it. And uh, the Germans went nowhere near there. Anyway, um, the next day we went up to a place and uh, more or less than the Germans was over there. Some Germans was over the back there and uh, they was firing guns and that, and uh, I had a little Jewish boy with me, and it was like a trench what we was in, a few of us, and uh, he said to me, uh, Chris, he said, or John, he's, I remember this distinctly, he said, uh, I'm a little Jewish boy, he said, and I'd, I don't want to be caught with the Germans. I said, well, he said, can I stay with you? I said, sure, stay with me, but I signed me with a bay. We're in this little trench in there, and we're waiting for him to come over the top there. And um, next minute, he leaves me. When he goes, bomb, he's dead. He's shot. And uh, then, I don't want to tell you what happened after, you know, with the Germans and that and that. And the next minute, we're, we're moving back a bit. And by the way, uh, I was a Batman to an officer. I had to look after him. You understand, he was an intelligence officer. He used to go across the line when before we went up the front. He used to go across the lines in a civilian suit. He was in intelligence. Then he'd come back and put his uniform on again. Mm. He'd go through the night. This is ridiculous to think of. He, you know, you may think, you'd say, so anyway, all of a sudden, bump the retreat came on. And the officer said to us, you are on your own as a retreat. You've got to get back onto the beach to get home. Because so many of them up the front, really right up the front, we was in the reserve, was Captured. It was over 200, oh, I would say about 200,000 captured. That was a part of the, that was the British Army. And uh, what was it going to do? I mean, uh, uh, a lot of us got back, but we got back uh, from where we were and walking and trying to get a bite and every man was himself. 
You understand? And, yeah. and it took us uh, days. And me and my mate, we uh, we even grabbed an army motorbike which was laying on the road, and we we got that and we went a little few yards. Then it broke down and we left the motorbike. And on the way back, we we had to walk back more or less. You know what I mean? There wasn't no transport down to that coast. You've got to get to that coast. And um, we stayed in the houses because, of course, all the French people left their house. And we slept in the house so that we knew that we, uh, that we had enough time to sleep in the house. So we had a couple of hours kept it down there. And a beautiful house, a bedroom, all the furniture there, the clothes hanging up. And on the wall was this. And I said to my, I said, I'm going to have that for my mother. So I went on the, on the wall and I took it down. And I said, I'm going to carry this home. Because, I mean, to get anything home, it was, it was going to be stripped anyway. And uh, that, at Rosary. You took it home for your mom? It was all for my mum. And uh, when you got to that beach, I mean, did you feel like you were gonna get out? Did you feel like you were gonna? Get I home? didn't. No, no, I didn't think I was gonna live because there was a lot of, when we when we left the beach. Uh, oh, uh, when what you mean going there when I got back to the beach? Yeah. Well, it took mm -hmm. us a couple of days there because it was a chance and the Germans were bomb, 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 and they was up in mess and fits and that, going along, and they was finding us all along. But uh, the funny thing is that when we landed in France, we went to a dock, and I can't remember what that dock was. All the ships were there. But when we went back, we landed on a, on a beach. We was waiting for that beach, that yellow beach. And... Uh, we got to it and the little boats from England was coming in, a fishing boat, a paddle boat, uh, you know, and, that, and the boys were swimming out, you know, and everybody, every man was for himself. Uh, I mean, I know that some of the boys had stuff on them which they stole out the shops coming through here, you know, and their pockets and that. And I said, no, did you take any to an Irishman? Did you take He said, yeah, you come near me, and that's it. You know, it was like. Uh, and you couldn't swim, though, Dad. No, and I couldn't swim. So I sat down. And, uh, oh, my mate left me, and I sat down, and I sat down. And I was old. F it. I couldn't care less now, because there wasn't many uh, uh, things coming over. Many message bits coming over. But now and again, bomb a mess of it would come up right along. And I'd get behind the sand here and I'm going to get down. I was lucky. And next door, to, next door to me, there was three Polish soldiers dead. We did this door now, it was underneath the sand. You know, when the sand blew, their faces come out of the sand. And uh, I was uh, sitting there and I, I, I couldn't care less then. I, I didn't care but you know, if I was done or a bullet or something, you know, and everybody was free self, you know, it was chaos on the beach. I mean, we, we, there was line enough to get onto the boat, onto the ships, and uh, there was hardly any ships coming. I mean, it was a beach right along, a miles. And you're seeing these fishing boats and paddle boats. Just, yeah, these no, aren't, they, these they aren't army boats. The game. And everybody was fine to get on a boat, boat, and I couldn't swim. I went to get out in the water and I played, and a soldier pushed me. Every man was for himself. Back, I went back on the beach again and I sat by the side of it. How'd you get out? Uh, eventually, uh, I had a soldier uh, I got into the water and it was a pedal steamer what I, what I was making for. Uh, you know, what used to take all the kids and wives on a pedal steamer. It was like a strip, but it was like, used to go round the excursions when it was in England. And 
he helped me out, he, he somehow, he swam and dragged me out to the boat and uh, they dragged me up out of the boat and put me and I got on the boat. Did you think when you were sitting there on that beach? Did you, I what? Did you think when you were sitting there on that beach that you would survive? No, I never knew it. And I sent that, I, I, I sent that little car while I was here. Well, I never sent it from there. I sent it while I was there and uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you get into the state of where you couldn't care less if he was killed or what, but it, you know, because there was so much confusion going on there with the army and the officers that left us. Uh, I mean, we had no officers. I mean, they just, they went on their own and left. You I, were just they got home, I, I saw one officer and he had the cheat enough to say to me, where I was lying in the sand, there was a church right at the back of me, a couple of miles away. And he said to me, Excuse me. we want some water. I said, no, oh, well, I said to him, where am I going to get water from? He said, you go to that church and get... You can pick that up if you need to. He said, go to that church and pick up some water. I said, but I said, no, I'm not, I'm not. He said, go to the church. So I went up the church, I said to him, I said, well, look, I was, I said, that, that's going to be a marker for the, for the, the guns. I said, that's going to be a mark because when you, when they fire a gun, they get a marker like that, you know, the big guns. And that, that and that's, that. And I said, I said, I'm taking the time. He said, you go and get the water. And I went and got the water and give it to him. And um, this was true. And he took away, I had a drop of water, it was a big can I have it. Just dropped the water out of it and then he left me. I never see him no more. And uh, I got back into my little pit, what I dug in the sand, and that's it. And then, then the next, I stayed there the night, and then the next day, this is when this, uh, one of the soldiers came up to me, a Scotsman. He said, John, he said, I said, I can't swim. He said, come with me, he said, I'll get you out. And this pedal steam had just come in. And in the meantime, of course, the mess of it was a And uh, I saw one or two Spitfires that uh, had been shot down on the beach. The Spitfire was lying on the beach on, the, on there, which had been shot down by they sent for me. And uh, the thing is that um, I got, he helped me on this boat and I got on. And when we got on there, we laid back, there was all in a line, all the boys in this church, and we had to take more or less our jacket off, more or less. You know, it was in the tail because getting there to the boat, we had to go through some swim, swamps. It was like water in a swamp there, mm -hmm. and we had to go with our rifle and go, and it was all mud and everything out there. You understand what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. And, uh, when you're sitting on that pedal steamer and you're looking back at what you just left, what what's happening in your mind? What are you thinking about? Well, are you thinking I survived this? Well, of course, I'm thinking of, thinking of survival. But at the same time, we still wasn't out of danger because of these Messerschmitts. You know, one of two ships that they got. And uh, one or two ships, I mean, they come over and brrr, because the ship took the time getting out of the boat. And the thing is that the message beta came over and brrr, on the deck. One or two got shot. Hmm. But when you looked, Dad, when you were on that paddle boat and you looked, did you have a chance to look back at the beach? Oh, or yes. were you lying down? Well, then what did you think? Did you still see other soldiers oh, trying yes. to get off the beach? Yes. They were still coming down there. I mean, they, 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 a load of them got away from the front line. And uh, the thing is that they took so many days to get to that beach. I mean, you know, it was chaos. And uh, as I say, every man was for himself. 
But this Scotsman helped me on, I couldn't swim. And I just laid down on the beach and said, that's it. I couldn't care less what happened. When you look back later in life now and you reflect on that, that whole experience, what do you think? Well, I thought it was bloody, it was bloody ridiculous, a war like that. I mean, you know, over one man, Hitler, started the war and I thought myself, well, was it worth it going out there, you know, coming back on the retreat like that, you know? And then you've got to take in consideration that how many of those troops were dismissed uh, from the army because of nerves. They was, I mean, it wasn't all the laughing game and they're, they're saying, hello, John. They were, some of them lost their nerve. And, uh, and there's one, one, I want to get home, I want to get home, he's nervous, and like that, on the beach. How were your nerves? Wasn't too bad, I was a little bit frightened, you know, I mean, uh, I kept looking over my shoulder and that, but, um, only I was lucky, really, but uh, it upset me to see so many of the, those boys who get killed like it. And, uh, I felt terrible when I got back. And when I got back to London, I mean, they washed us, made us, you know, put us in a bath, took the dirty uniform off of us, took our rifle away from us. And uh, for a joke, I said, I want that rifle back when I, when I get issued back again. They said, no, you won't get it back. It was a lightweight rifle and I loved it. And then uh, they put us in another uniform and <laughs> I went back to England to the wife. Now when we got back there, I um, was there for a couple of days and they was bombing over the top. These bombs was coming down and that and he, you know, and I said to the wife, Annika, where do you go? She said, in the Anderson shelter. And I was pleased to get back into the army again, go back. After that experience you were? Yeah, you wanted to, to get, get away from those bombs. And uh, the thing is that um, a lot of them was discharged in hospital. And when I got back to the barracks, I contacted septicemia poisoning. Mm. And I had septicemia poisoning and it, it nearly killed me. I was in the army hospital there. And uh, Hey, you're 99 years old. You survived it though. You're here. Oh, yeah. But when I had that septicemia poison, the doctor came over and he said, uh, where is your, you know, where you live? He knew where we lived, one of the army doctors. And he said uh, to me, John, he said, uh, you got septicemia poison and uh, it's very, you know, he said, you're liable to go off. So I was laying there and right up in front of the hospital was a photo of uh, Napoleon and I was looking at that in the bed and then I closed my eyes and then the next minute all the family around me, they told the family to get there because they thought I was going to die. And uh, I laid there and they stood there and they talked to me, you know, my mo me mother and my brothers was there and me, you know, and my wife. And uh, they said to me, come on, come on, Chris. My name was Chris then, but the other name was John. And they John called Chris. you know, Chris. And uh, the thing is, it's come on, wake up, wake up. You know, I heard this from here. And bit by bit, I got better. And then the uh, officer came over to me 
But he said, yeah, we're going to discharge you, Carpenter. I mean, my nerves are still bad. It was a load discharged. And they were sent out. I mean, one of, some of them lost their legs. They was in the hospital, arms off. You know, and, and, and just discharge, discharge her. And I was supposed to go to... Um, uh, one minute, I went to no one minute, I went to the the bar I went back to the barracks after the hospital no and then I was discharged when I, when I got this septicemia poisoning and uh, then I came home and that's when I wanted to get back in the army again because uh, I was pleading to get back in the army. They give me one medal, which I lost somewhere, I don't know where that is. And uh, that's it, I settled down. And then, the thing is that I got better and better and better. When the Americans came into the war, uh, and they finally got to France and settled back there with all the troops there, the war was nearly over when, when uh, when the the oh yeah, I joined the American Red Cross. Yeah. And they gave me a uniform, an American. And they thought that I was American. And I used to drive across the channel, on a boat in this big, six by. I mean six by. I mean it was a big one. These Turkmen struck. And before that, I had to have a test to go through it. And then I had to go to the hospital. And have a medical way. I've got it here. Wait a minute. That's my army book. Well, I'll show you something here. Uh, that's another part of the army. Wait a minute. No, that that I was sent home. I've got a letter here where I reported to the hospital before I went into the American Red Cross. Hmm. And the American uh, when when the doctor examined me, bum 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 bum. You know, again, I had all the old thing. He said, uh, you pass. Was the war still on when you were in the oh, American yeah. Red Cross? Yes, yes, it was still on. And the thing is that um, the Mertens used to love their donuts and I used to take their costume. <laughs> Food and everything, and that's it. I've got two more questions for you because I've got a, I've got a tight amount of time for to do this on TV today. But I, I I wanted to ask you how that experience changed your life. Um, did it change anything? Well, it did change me a bit. Uh, I got more tempered. You know what I mean? I got lost my temper a lot. And the thing is that. Um, I should I was upset. I almost killed my mother. I, 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 I mean, I really, yeah, it still girl. hung on me because I nearly done the wife. I killed her. I thought she was a German. Kind of like PTSD. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I had. Um, yeah. uh, the thing is that uh, it's when I, I, I once came on leave and I had the bayonet and the rifle. And I was up in the bed then, and uh, all of a sudden I turned around. I was standing, I got out of bed, I went to my rifle, and all of a sudden I went to put the rifle into the wife to kill her. I thought she was a German. Had nightmares. And that's it. Did and it, it change, your, did me, it change your perspective on life at all? Do what? Did it change your perspective on life at all? Oh yes, my nerves are gone. I mean, I lost my nerve and everything, and uh, I don't know. And I thought of all the boys what I lost and what came out of it, and uh, I mean, my father. Is once when I when I once when I was on leave, I've got to tell you this story. Is that? Uh, I was friends with a sailor, uh, one of the sailors who was on the fleet, you know, he was in, in the Navy. And uh, the war was still on, and I was home on a bit of leave. And uh, I came down from the flat, and opposite there was other 
little houses and this apartments, little apartments was over this side. And as I came out, a woman came out, she said, and I had my uniform on, she said, excuse me, she said, there's something sticking out by the side of my piano. So I said, what are you talking about, dear? You know, I mean, I was in my uniform and the sailor come up, we was going out to have a pint of beer over the pub, you know, before mm. I went back, you know. And the thing is that she said, well, it's sticking out by the side of my piano. And she said, I want to know what it is. I said, hold on. And do you remember, we used to have air raids. Mm -hmm. You know, the bombs coming down, black out, no lights on, nothing. If you went to a cinema, you had to run out because the sirens go and we had blackout curtains. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody had to do that. No lights showing. No lights. And the thing is that uh, the planes used to come over and put some bombs down, bomb, 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 and you know, big, and you see them up in the sky, you come and look, bomb, bomb, bomb. They hit schools, everything. Mm -hmm. Kill children, underground. Anyway, this woman, she um, came out, she said, there's something, but I was like, when I went in there, it's only a bomb in it. A time bomb. And the clock is still going, tick, 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 tick. And I said to my mate, what are we going to do? I said, I said, mum, it was sticking out by the side. He said, well, we better get it out of here. I said, we don't matter if we get it out of here. If it goes off, I said, the house goes up and we go up. I said, so what are we going to do? And this, this is the God's truth. I mean, you know, I told you about it, not Pat, and I told your mother. We got hold of the bomb and there was two of us and we carried it on our shoulders and it was still ticking, tick, 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 it was about, oh, about as big as that. It was a so heavy, it was, you know, fairly weight, he got one part of the shoulder, he got the other part and carried out and all the, and then the pub, there was a pub right opposite where we lived and then some of the boys came out, oh! And so, you know, the people started, and we carried around to some spare ground where the houses was all down. It was just spare ground. And we put it on the ground. And then I said, you better get in touch with the, the bomb squad. To a gentleman who came over, he came over, he said, what is that? I'm telling you, bomb! It's ticking. So anyway, they all run. Anyway, the, the bomb squad come up, and uh, took the clock, took done the it. clock and that, yeah. Wow. And 10 minutes later, the police came up and they said, we're gonna arrest you, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> to me and my mate, the sailor. I said, don't be silly, I said it was a bomb. We're gonna arrest you. But they never, ah. they changed their mind. The, the last question I have for you, this movie is coming out and you're going to go see it. What do you think about all the popularity around this all of a sudden? Well, to be quite frank with you, uh, I think that uh, what I saw in some parts of the film here, uh, it wasn't the quite the right thing. There's a lot of things being added. I mean, we never saw one of those victory boats, you know, the barge, like the bars were let out the front of the ship. Never saw one of them. And yet on the film, there's a dozen of them all along the dock and the, and the boys. And we never see them lining up like that, neither. It was just kind of every minute. There was no it. line up at all. And you know, there was no officers. No officers at all. I mean, they got and then they disappeared. And the thing is that, uh, the beach, uh, some parts of the beach which they showed, that's quite true. But as for the, as for the, uh, uh, the, you know, what they showed you, where all the boats are coming in and, and there's the soldiers saying, please get me back, no, no. Well, that, that was true. But it wasn't on there, it was on the beach, on the, where the sand was, 
right along the beach, mm -hmm. and that's where the sand, and then probably that's what they wanted to do, to get home. And in the film, you see one soldier saying, please get me home, and I know. Dad, you don't know, the, I told you it's the no, story No, I know, well. yeah, I know. Oh, I'm not saying that. Do, are, you, are you happy that someone's telling a story about this? Oh, yeah. of course. Things about time. It might put me in the memories there. Uh, Things might come back. There is an old Dunkirk film on here, but it's nothing like the real thing. But uh, that film, what the story of the parts, is, is a lot of it true. Well, that but was they got my, it quite right. That was your, your niece, Mary. Okay, that just called. She's like mad. She's English British, and she lives in Florida. And she just called to tell him that she went to see Dunkirk, and she actually was crying. Yeah. She said because how do you how do you think proud to be it made me how cry. do you think you're gonna react to it? He's gonna get upset. Right? I'll be all right. I think. Yeah, we'll I'm not. Uh, <laughs> it does make me think of doing things, you know. But I'm there. But uh, people don't realise what we had to put up with on that beach. And, uh, this will tell a lot of people. I wanted to get home and I kept myself cheerful to, you know. Oh. When I think about how many men were killed there. A lot of my friends were killed. A lot of them, you know, bullets and I saw people, soldiers there with their cutter high. My friend, he had his gut hanging out, and I was standing over him saying, and there was a priest there saying the last prayers to him, and it was terrible. It didn't affect me, but I got over it when I got home. And, Daddy uh, didn't speak, my mother told me this, I was too little, but um, he didn't speak, he would not speak about it for years and years and years, even when I was a young adult. And then something, I don't know what happened, but something, all of a sudden, he started talking about it. But he went for years, was totally not talking about it. Wow. You know, yeah. John, thank you for sharing all this with us. We you want to? Yeah. yeah. Well, do you want to, how do you want to do that, Corky? Do you want to get video of the... Yeah. yeah. Or did you have any questions? Corky always has good stuff. Uh, not necessarily. Um, maybe if you just wanted to, to clarify, you were answering. Um, what did you say? Uh, just, just you were, you, Steve asked you a question. Um, are you glad the story is being told? Um, what did you say? Are you, are you glad the story is being told? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, I always felt that. Uh, Somebody, you know, people should, you know, these young people should learn about it and, and, and uh, hear about it, what happened before Japan, uh, America went into the, into the war. I mean, there was enough bad things about Germany, uh, about the Americans, how many men they lost in Normandy and that. And as, as by luck, and a lot of us got out of the army over our nerves and what happened to us. They discharged us. And the thing is that I would have been in Normandy and I would have probably been killed up there. And that's what I think of sometimes. Well, I, I know Dad is happy about, because as soon as he saw it on the TV, the trailer, he said, me up. Is it, and I think it's a made good a film. Movie about Norway, uh, Dunkirk. Yeah, Dunkirk. Yeah. The parts of what I've seen you know. on the film is very, very good. It shows you the beach and uh, that. And I only saw a few parts of it, uh, but uh, it, some stuff wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't the same. But uh, I've just told you the story of what happened out there and that, and uh, that's it. Thank you so much.